Actually, I need you guys to know that I had a dream last night or this morning, and it involved, like, George Costanza from Seinfeld being this huge <laughs> hero. And I recall him, like, opening a door, and there was this huge line of soldiers all applauding him. And all I remember is being on the sidelines and screaming, at last, it is the summer of George! What the f***, Annie? Hey there, Internet. I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And this is the Gem Jam, where we're doing episode by episode recap of the 1980s cartoon Gem and the Holograms, because both it and the comic are truly, truly infinite. It's Gem Infinite, folks. Gem Infinite. A.K.A. the Cross Time Caper. It's definitely the Cross Time Caper, let's be real. A.K.A. I'm in love. You're in love, Mackenzie? I love everything about this plot. I love our son. I love the hijinks. I'm already there for it. Say no more. So this is issue one of a six-part miniseries. This is going to be broken up, as you may already know, between this and The Misfits. So we'll have Jem will be doing issue one, Misfits number two, then back between Jem and Misfits for three, four, five, and six. So this is going to be a real freaking treat, you guys. When we had Kelly Thompson on, she talked about how you weren't able to quite do sci-fi shenanigans that much with the regular comic. So we get sci-fi and freaking spades now. Oh boy, do we have sci-fi. Sci-fi! Or more accurately, comic book sci-fi. This is 100% Crisis on Infinite Gems. Now, this this issue is, just not to build your hopes up too much, this issue is an act one, essentially. So we're not going to quite get into everything until the last couple pages. But the important thing is, we have gone into this completely blind, and I'm very excited. It's like not opening your presents before Christmas. Our boy's here. He's so good. Our son. He's so good. This is also, by the way, the first time, aside from, say, annuals, that we are getting in this book, uh, multiple artists. We actually have pages 1 through 11 are by Stacy Lee, and pages 12 through 20 are by Jen Hickman. Sarah Stern is doing colors uh, in this issue. So we don't get quite the same montage of goofy story panels that we got for uh, the story so far pages before. Now we've just got, like, text and a huge star on the screen. Which is going to be a lot more succinct. I picture this as sort of like a star. Star Wars crawl across the screen. Oh my god. It is a period of civil war. Jerrica's struggle with her dual identity is Jem, which ended with Jerrica revealing the secret to her now ex-boyfriend, Rio. But yeah, we basically introduce our two status quos because we're also doing a little bit of duty for the misfits as well. So as you may remember, Rio knows and Shayna plays bass. Also, the misfits have their own label now. Yeah, I guess they're more or less done with the TV show. And also, Pizzazz, as it says, is having some trouble letting go of her grudge against Gem and the holograms. That's the final ominous line as the crawl disappears into the vastness of space. And we slowly pan down. And we immediately latch on to Jim and Pizzazz yelling at each other. Which is kind of like a slow pan down into a planet as a giant ship shoots past shooting in a smaller ship. Basically the same thing. I love how in this comic you actually get Jim and Pizzazz yelling at each other, whereas in the cartoon it was mostly Pizzazz yelling at Jim and Jim being like, why are you so mean to me? I mean, there were a couple of instances where Jim would actually let Pizzazz have it, but they were few and far between. The cartoon very much had a the good guys turn the other cheek thing instead of all of our characters are somewhat flawed and get mad. And yeah, they're arguing about Jem supposedly wrecking the Misfits' careers and Jem being like, we did not actually do that. I did not ever say, Riot, do this. But of course, Pizzazz doesn't believe her. And then we get these two real, real rad splash pages sort of breaking down our bands as we show both the misfits and the holograms. I love that Aja has been identified as the saltiest hologram. I love that the kindest holograms are right across from each other. Rhea has three brothers, thought having four sisters would be less violent. Apparently not. Poor Rhea. We have these little designs in the top half of the page behind the characters. And for the holograms page, it's all swoopy lines and soft angles. And the Misfits is all jagged and pointy and all pointing at Pizzazz, who is definitely screaming. I gotta say, I kind of miss Kimber's long hair. Really? I really like her short hair. I think it's really cute. But I kind of love that Kimber's long hair would just get everywhere. It was very much in line with her character. That is true. Anyway, concert 20 minutes ago. About the outfits 
outfits they're wearing, at least for everyone except Rhea and Jem. These are modified versions, or at the very least homages to their concert outfits from issue six, which was the first concert they did where they showed up the misfits after being kicked out of the Battle of the Bands, which is great because those are real good looks. I love Rhea's little tongue sticking out as she as she hammers away at the drums. She is really focused right now. Also, the song they're singing? I remembered these lyrics. This is that song that Jerrica sings to herself after running away from the audition in issue one. Ooh, so I guess that one's finally ready. It's super cute to see this played by everyone rather than a sad acoustic guitar song. And then we go backstage. Question for you guys. Do you think Rio Pacheco has a hard time figuring out where his eyes should go? He knows her actual eye line is somewhere in her boobs, right? He looks like, should I be looking down? What am I doing? Do I look at the hologram boobs? Is that where her eyes are? Where do I look? Do I look up? Do I look down? Oh, Rio, what have you done? I will say he probably instinctively looks at her quote unquote face because the human brain is tuned to seek out faces. But yeah, there's probably a moment of confusion there. Right. Rio is here. He's backstage. He has a press pass. He's covering the concert for the website. And this is the most awkward conversation. It's basically Rio telling her that she did great. And then Jim ends up and trying to invite him over. And he says, uh, no, thanks. Because all of the other boyfriends and girlfriends are coming over. We all miss you. We realize we were your entire social circle and now you're gone. He seems like the kind of guy who really digs himself into his work, yeah. And she's like, I, you could you, we could just come over as friends. And he's like, I don't know if I can ever be just your friend. And she's like, I understand. And he's like, by the way, you, you should still totally tell everyone you're Gem. This is going to go so bad. This is a time bomb. Then Rio dips. He's gone. And she walks back to the bus. And I actually really like the panel that's her walking back to the bus. I, I don't know what I really like about it. I guess it's that she's so isolated. So it kind of represents how she feels in that moment. And it's a long panel. So it's like a long drawn out moment for her. Emphasizing the isolation. So she gets back on the bus. They ask where she was. She says she ran into Rio. And everyone's like, yikes. <laughs> And they talk about, are we going to say anything about Jem being a hologram? And everybody's vote is still no. And they also bring up that uh, Ray is pretty much the only one who can come out of this clean because she wasn't around when the Jem thing was established. But Raya actually pops in with, uh, I'm with you guys no matter what. I joined this band and I joined this family. I'm here. Stepping away from the, the internal logic of the comic for a moment, which is admittedly Jem logic, but I'm not sure, by the way, we have cool hologram technology that we've used to create our lead singer is going to be a career ending thing. I think the overwhelming response would be, wow, that's really cool. Like Wired would want to do like a 20 page feature on that. I mean, they're definitely already using like holograms in the production, right? It feels like in the past times we've seen the concerts, a lot of times there have been like, like the signage in issue six, right? But yeah, like that's that with the dinosaur and everything. If Hannibal Burress can hire a double to go to the Spider-Man premiere instead of him. This doesn't seem like it would be a career ending thing. This would be seen as like a huge elaborate, wow, 2017 is a wild year thing. I mean, this is a universe in which Jetta faking her British accent is like a huge reality TV show plot instead of just sort of like a weird scandal. Fair. Like I said, internal logic of the comic. And so this all culminates in a big old sappy hug, which Kimber says is too sappy for her while, while Shane is like, Shh, stop fighting it. I don't think anything's too sappy for Kimber. She's dating Stormer. And then we skip ahead 20 minutes to this argument. And I love that we don't try to establish how this argument started, just that these characters interacted with each other in the same space, and therefore it had to lead to this. My favorite part of this, of course, is that we start with Jim and Pizzazz arguing. We go to Aja and Jetta, and then we go back to Shayna and Blaze holding them back. And then we get to Stormer and Kimber. Hi, baby. Hi. Which I seem to recall is really what we ever wanted from like the cartoon idea of Kimber and Stormer dating. Kimber says something like, can't you control pizzazz? And then Stormer gets kind of irate. And then Kimber's like, sorry, sorry, I know it came out wrong. And then everybody stops as suddenly there are a bunch of fans around taking pictures of them. Oops. I love this panel where everyone stops and looks away. It's very good. This is a good panel. And I also like how blank and a little surprised all the people taking photos are too. What I really love is that three people are doing like the vertical video thing and two of them actually have the phone oriented correctly. Good job, guys. So yeah, all of a sudden the misfits and the holograms get shy and clear out. Yeah, they mutter a sort of ceasefire 
fire to each other. And then we switch to our second artist on the book for the remaining pages of the issue. It actually, the two styles actually meld pretty well because I didn't actually immediately notice the transition. And so uh, they, they explain to Rhea why, how come they're upset with the misfits with the whole lighting thing falling on Aja. And then someone interrupts their sisterly fun, which is Gem and the Holograms. I need your help. It's our boy. <laughs> Look at our boy. He's so punk. This is actually very understated for Tech Rat, frankly. So he's sitting there in a, in a ripped shirt with unlaced boots and a, a lip ring. And he's holding a magical girl wand, essentially. Yeah, he is. I love it. I can assure you I am here has nothing to do with pizzazz. Well, technically, I, I guess technically if you go far enough back, it does have to do with pizzazz. But, but not in the way you mean. Uh, yeah, I think if anything, if you go back far enough, pizzazz is somehow at fault. Definitely. And Jim's like, no thanks. And then he's like, I need you to help me save the world. Yeah, so that's what kind of comic this is. I'm real excited. When I was reading this, I just let out a squeal and died of happiness. <laughs> that line is where this entire comic just turns. Honestly, even if it wasn't it, Peril, I'm not sure why I would help you. And he goes, okay, then don't do it for me. Do it for him. Bitten. Your father! And that's where the characters literally turn. Slowly I turn. <laughs> what did you say? Jem even gets a font change for what did you say? I really love that even Ray is like, that's not cool. And then I was just like, I'm gonna punch you into the moon. An alternate universe tech rat is like, I swear this isn't a joke. Your father's like a father to me as well. <laughs> There's no way our father knew you, you jerk. And if he did, he definitely didn't like you. <laughs> And Jem says he has to explain what he's talking about right now or else they'll lose Aja and um, they won't watch. And Sekra's like, you should probably sit down. Meanwhile, out in the parking lot, get, off. They get away with whatever they want, like the queens of something like the rulers of the universe, rulers of the apply to them. Pizzazz has a good point. It is like the rules of the universe don't even apply to them. It's true. They're the protagonists. Does this mean that when they go to the alternate universe, it's an alternate universe where they aren't the protagonists and therefore they like actually experience consequences for stuff? Oh my gosh. It's like the Justice League going to that alternate earth where evil always wins. So Jenna suggests that Pizzazz maybe just let this go and take the high road to which Roxy asks, what's a high road? I mean, I'm not really sure, but I've heard it's a thing. Pizzazz is like, no, I can't stand them thinking they're right. And then she storms back in. And they're like, are we following her? Yes, we are. As Stormer just sighs deeply and says that the stress is killing her. Stormer is one day going to sigh her way into a different plane of existence. I mean that literally. So meanwhile, in that back room, everyone is posing on a whole bunch of stacked chairs. And Kimber has decided that she she's like a cat. She needs to be at the top of the pile of chairs. You, you expect us to believe that you are not the tech rat we know, but that you came here from an alternate earth. Through a freaking portal wormhole thing that you built with our dad, wait, our alternate reality dad, who is not dead on your earth. And in the hopes of getting us to come back to your earth to save your world. From a technology that has fallen into corrupt hands and threatens to destroy the world if left unchecked. Yes, that's it. Finally, you got it. Uh, this is the best panel of all time, by the way. Just this explanation. They're all very carefully blank faces. And then they all burst into snickering laughter. And so Tekra uh, um, activates his magical girl wand. And it creates a gigantic, glittering, glimmering portal. It's pink. My favorite part of this is honestly Tekrat's shoelaces just rising up in the wind. Yeah, it creates a huge wind current, and that really does a lot of fun things with the way everything plays around here. Is Synergy actively creating hair whipping around for Gem? Synergy probably has like a whole physics engine for Gem's hair. It would be kind of cool though, wouldn't it, if Gem's hair didn't move at all? So Gem's like, I'm, are you 100% on being on the level here? You're not punking us because uh, here you're pretty evil. Oh my god. Gem is worried about them being punked about this wormhole standing right in front of her. That is what this world is like. And Tech Rat replies with, if that were true, then would I know that you were Jerrica Benton? And everybody kind of gasps. And he also reveals that the same hologram technology has fallen into the wrong hands on his world and is now destroying it. Which is, of course, the thing that, like, they always vaguely allude to in, like, the cartoon, right? But no, it has fallen into the capital W, capital H, 
wrong hands. In their little huddle, they quickly talk about that. But the important part is Kimber goes, does that mean we get to see dad again? And they, they know that it won't really be dad. And Ray is like, I'd love to meet your dad. I also wouldn't mind saving the world. And they ask, so what does this mean? And Jem says, I think it means it's showtime, holograms. And then they dive into the portal. In cool power poses. With a silhouette of pizzazz in the shadows in the background. How the hell did Aja get enough air to do that? I really like that all of these poses look like they're about to either fall into the opening freaking theme of Digimon, or in there that middle bridge part of a freaking anime opening where all of the characters fly by you. I love how Rhea's arm is just sticking out. Rhea went in first, heck yeah! Rhea lives for this stuff. And in the background we get a silhouette of pizzazz in the door, and then the misfits arrive. What? Oh my god, Techrat, what in the hell is this thing? And where did Jem and the holograms go? And that's our to be continued. And that's also when I noticed that Techrat has a Jim and the hologram star shaved into his head. Oh my god, I love our son. I love him in all of his alternate universes. Our garbage son. Our beautiful son. So we get sort of an ash can that is a preview of Infinite Number 2, which is going to be the Misfits issue. You guys are just going to have to wait till the next issue comes out for us to really get into this because there's a lot to talk about. But we also get a brief taste of exactly what this alternate world looks like. And guys? It's full of holograms. My god, it's full of holograms. They should have sent a poet. Thank you for listening to us uh, giggle about our son. Guess what? It's not gonna let up. The six issue miniseries is basically going to be all tech rat all the time as far as our podcast is concerned. Anyway, that is gonna do it for us. Join us next time for the cross time caper number two, aka a gem infinite number two or gem and the holograms the misfits infinite number two or gem and the holograms the misfits infinite number one infinite part two which is starting to sound like a 90s spider-man title card by the way which really should be the ideal naming convention for all things so until next time dear listeners i'm annie i'm kit but i'm matt <laughs> and this has been the gem jam where we remind you infinite the final frontier these are the voyages of the starship <laughs> outrageous it's continuing mission to explore strange new realities, to seek out new holograms and new civilizations, to boldly go where no glam rocker has gone before.